So welcome to the third video in this session. Um, we're going to take a look at another little cluster of behavioral biases and link it to the coronavirus crisis. My next bias is herd behavior. Herd behavior, sometimes known as uh, groupthink, is when individuals act collectively as part of a group and they often make decisions as a group that they would not necessarily make as an individual. They, uh, they follow the herd. And we've seen this lots of times, particularly, I guess, in the early days of the lockdown with the panic buying in supermarkets. Yeah, panic buying is certainly a big issue there. And then there's an aspect of herd behaviour. Uh, one person starts uh, buying up copious amounts of toilet roll and, uh, and cowpaw for children. Uh, it makes sense for others to do that. It's rational to do that because uh, the fear of losing out. Loss aversion is linked to that. The fear of loss, the fear of losing out. Loss aversion is a very powerful behavioural bias. And I think we can see lots of examples in the crisis. First of all, something about the concept itself. Loss aversion happens when we focus more on the potential losses from a decision, a choice, than the potential gain. And the evidence seems to be in many situations that a loss is more painful to people. We feel a loss than a, an equivalent gain is rewarding, beneficial to people. Here's a quick thought experiment on the uh, very famous example. A friend will offer you a bet on the toss of a fair coin. By the way, this coin will only be tossed once. It won't be tossed 10 times. If you lose, then you must pay £50 to that person. And the question that's posed is, what's the minimum sum that you would need to win to make this bet attractive enough for you? Now, when you ask people if they're loss-averse and risk-averse, a lot of people say they would need at least £100 uh, as a win to make this bet attractive. And again, that's evidence of loss-aversion. Uh, paying £50 would be the loss that would be very painful. Perhaps you need a £100 win to equalise the two. Very, very interesting research being done in professional golf about uh, why it is that professional golfers tend to putt better for par than they do for birdie. Uh, indeed, uh, loss aversion theory. Uh, here's a study. We have estimated that a professional golfer will score on average uh, 0.2 strokes lower when Pebble Beach hole number two is labelled as a par four versus when it's labelled a par 5. Uh, if it's a par hole, those of you who are non-golfers, if you get a 4 and it's a par 4, you don't lose any strokes to the field. If it's a par 4 and you score a 5, you lose a stroke. It's called the bogey, you lose a stroke to the field. The evidence seems to be that professional golfers are highly risk-averse and uh, they tend to put better when it's, uh, the, the, the risk is they're going to lose a shot to the field. Quite a few coaches in professional sport are highly risk-averse. They, they demonstrate loss aversion in their tactics and decision-making. My next behavioural bias is the normalcy bias, otherwise known as the ostrich effect. And this we can see with the crisis, pretending things haven't changed when perhaps the hard evidence suggests that they have. Linked with that, and I'll show a video clip in a second, is the overconfidence bias linked or known as the hot hand fallacy. And this is when somebody's subjective confidence in their own judgments is greater than the objective accuracy of those judgments. We think that we are you know, largely immune to something. We think the, the risk is more to other people. Uh, and that can change our behaviour. Let's take a, a look at some overconfident students also displaying some loss of ocean on a Floridian beach. I get corona, I get corona. At the end of the day, I'm not going to let it stop me from partying. You know, I've been waiting. We've been waiting for Miami spring break for a while. About two months we've had this trip planned. Two, three months. We're just having a good time. Whatever happens, happens. Like, it's really messing up with my spring break. What is there to do here other than go to the bars or the beach and they're closing all of it? It's really messing up. I think they're blowing it way out of proportion. I think it's doing way too much. Doing this bad. We need a refund. 
this virus ain't that serious. It's serious. It's more serious things out there like hunger and poverty. We need to address that. Yeah, I mean, we planned this a long time ago, and it was kind of up in the air if we still go, but, like, we're here. I just turned 21 this year, so I'm here to party, so it's kind of disappointing, but we're just making the most of it. We met these other people in our little Airbnb spot, so we're just hanging out with them and trying to get drunk before everything closes. I mean, it sucks, but we're going to make the best of it. We're enjoying ourselves. It sucks, and I'm from New Orleans, so this really sucks. However... We're gonna enjoy ourselves. We having day parties all day. It's my birthday, St. Patrick's Day. Turn up. We're just trying to roll with the boy. We're just living for the moment. We're just going for. We're just gonna do what happens when it happens. When stuff closes, we're gonna do it when it closes. But uh, uh, besides that, we're just trying to have the best trip we can. We're yeah. Well, wow. that, that that kind of uh, video uh, creates all kinds of emotions in my mind. There's a, there's a hint of information failure there. A lot of loss aversion, but fundamentally an overconfidence. Uh, that uh, this virus won't affect you. There we go. That's our second look at some behavioural biases.